Uh, what comes to mind when I ask you, what do you remember most about your playing career, your two years in Manhattan? What would you say? What would I say? <laughs> um, one of the best things I've ever been around. I mean, well coached. I mean, it's just hard, you know, seeing a team the way we was, the way we were organized, the way we was well coached by Coach Bill Snyder, and the way we played together in that 98 season, it was magical. I don't. I, I just don't know a team that was better. Um, of course, we we lost that Big Twelve, um, but at the end of the day, I, I know I know without a shadow of a doubt we were the best team in the country. Frank Murphy talking with us played for the Wildcats from '98 to '99. You were a top junior college player in the country when you're coming out of Garden City and you wind up at K State. What was your recruitment like, and what in the end was it that got you to K State? Man, recruiting was was fun, but you know, I went to like three, two places, and I, I didn't want to do all the traveling. I had so many opportunities. I was blessed with that, with a lot of hard work and dedication in junior college, great coaching staff at junior college. Coach Gush, Jim Gush, and his staff put me in a great opportunity to show my talent. And um, when I visit Kansas State, um, one thing Coach Snyder, what, what really tilted it was Coach Snyder, really, because he, he was being honest with me. A lot of, a lot of coaches was just telling me what I wanted to hear as if I didn't know the sound of that. <laughs> but um, Cole Snyder told me, he said, look at this film. He said, do you think you can win that starting job? I said, yeah, of course. And he said, well, you're going to have to come here and prove it. He didn't say he was giving me anything. He didn't say I was better than the other guy. He made me answer my own question and say, well, you got to come here and compete and prove it. And I love competition and I love competing. But at the end of the day, it's a team Sport, the team effort, and um, that's that's the bottom line. So that's that's what sold it for me for Kansas State. Coach Bill Snyder, character, and being up front. How tough was it to play for him, and what what was your relationship like with him? I had a great relationship with Coach Snyder. He was always there for me. He was always honest with me, and I, you got to respect that. Um, playing for him, I don't think it's hard at all if if you're ready to work and you're ready to do the things that it. That, that he's putting before you to win games. He knows how to win. He knows how to um, put you in position to win. It's just a just the fact is, is you're going to put in the work. And if you put in the work, you, you, you see what happened in 98. We put in the work, and you've seen what, what happened. And our, our little blooper game cost us the national championship. But, you know, other than that, he always put us in position to win as far as his coaching and putting, us, putting our talent in position to be shown as well on the field. Now, two things I remember uh, about you, Frank, and Frank Murphy talking with us here. Obviously, just an incredible athlete. You were very productive at K-State, but you had to deal with the four-game suspension when you came in, and it was like a high ankle sprain in 1999, right? How much did those things affect just how productive you were able to be? Well, of course, I could never get going. I only had two years coming from junior college. My first year there, I was suspended for four games. So, you know, that's that's pretty much half of the season in one bowl game. So that that, that year... Um, I was hit with that. And then the second year, I, I popped my foot in um, training, and I had to have surgery and um, came back and had three amazing games, put me right in a good position to, to, to compete with that leading rusher um, in the same thing. And then uh, fourth, third or fourth game, uh, my ankle got fell on by um, a big defensive lineman from Texas, and that put me out pretty much almost the rest of the season until the last game. That was it. <laughs> the only play I, I didn't play no more than ten games my two years at Kansas State University, but I enjoyed the the, the team, my teammates. I enjoyed the coaching staff, and most importantly, I enjoyed the fans. Yeah, the four game suspension. Do you look back on it and harbor any ill will to how all that went down and and what happened with the car and everything? Yeah, you know, I, I don't hold no no ill will against um, nobody, of course, um, but I just think that. When, when you have those type of things, and I've been with those boosters in Garden City and those same gentlemen been there for me forever. Even when I wasn't playing at Garden City, they was there for me. It was when I ain't never touched the field, when I set out the first year, they was there for me. So I, they never seen me play a lick of football when I became friends with them. They never mentioned that they was boost for Kansas State. They never brought up Kansas State. And I know how hard it is for people to, to, to understand that, but we was actually friends. And that's why I took it so hard because those was really my friends. <laughs> like before I even 
stepped foot on the field in Guard City. Um, and I set out that year. That's when we became friends. They didn't know if I was going to be a star. Nobody knew I was going to be a star. As far as they know, oh, what they, they had no clue whatsoever what I would become. So with that being said, yeah, that, that part bothered me because people really didn't see it for what it really was. They seen what they wanted to see based on what happens in college football. And I'm so glad things are about to change in college football because um, I just think a lot of things are not fair, not in order. And I think, they, you know, college football has been getting over for a very, very long time. And I'm glad that they're making the proper steps to lead go towards something different that will give these athletes a chance to be able to make money or receive money because it's just not fair. I will say to this day, I think one of the coolest-looking K-State football pictures you can find out there was the – it was a Sports Illustrated spread on an article during 98 about the team, and it's you against Iowa State, like full extension sprawled out in the air, diving to make a catch. Do you, do you have that somewhere? You know what? I don't have it. I need it in my life. <laughs> so if someone <laughs> has it, please let me know. I, that's something I, I think about all the time when we think about games and things of that nature. But, man, when, Mike, when Michael Bishop throw a ball, and I told Mike, I said, Mike, you'll never be able to outthrow me. Just throw it. I'll go get it. And he was like, okay. <laughs> and you know Michael Bishop got an arm, one of the um, strongest arms to, in college football um, and in the NFL. Been around a lot of NFL quarterbacks, trust me. And they throw nowhere near like Mike when it comes to, the, to, to how far and how hard. Um, but he, 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 he tested me then, and, um, and like I told him before, you can't, can't out-throw me. <laughs> Well, and that's because Frank Murphy talking with us, by the way, the legend was that I always heard that you put up a four two two forty here at K State. Is is that an accurate number? That's an accurate number. Um and, and I got so motivated because coming from junior college I ran four one one time on the track where we was timing, but you know, coming from junior college, you don't know how real that is and the coaches didn't know how real it was and they just like, Well, we know he's fast but we don't think it's all that. And um, and I remember that in an article, and I hung that article up in my room every day, and I looked at that article every day, and that gave me I, – I, I worked harder. I stretched more <laughs> regularly. I wanted to test and break every record I possibly could. That was my motivation. I'm always looking for something to motivate me. And I think I ran like a 4-2-1, and then they – yeah, 4-2-1, then the coach said, you know, run it again. And the scouts and people there, and I ran it again. And that's, that's how that happened. And, um, yeah, still got that record. <laughs> Love it. Frank Murphy uh, talking with us here. I know this is a, a bit of a downer and a bit of a bummer, but I do have somewhat of an obsession with that 98 Big 12 title game, man, just because you guys were so close to the national championship. Do you, do you buy into any of the – distractions? And when I say distractions, it was the coaches that had announced they were leaving for Oklahoma or – the score of that UCLA Miami game being announced during the game. Do, do you buy into any of that affecting you guys? Um, I definitely don't think about coaches leaving for Oklahoma. Our coaches were dedicated. They wanted to win a national championship. Like everybody, you don't get that far and just say, "Oh, well, you know, we won Oklahoma next year." No, you want to win and win big because we had the best team. And I'm not just saying it because I was on that team. Everybody know we had the best team, special team wise. One of the dynamic kick returns of David Allen when it comes to special teams, we block kick. Defensive-wise, led by Jeff Kelly and, and Mark Seminole. Come on. And then offensive-wise, led by Michael Bishop and, and, and the other handful of us athletes. So I think at the end of the day, um, it came down to probably when they announced that we'll be going to the national championship and we win the game. We was up. We was dominating. It was been a great to be a blowout in our opinion. We've been in these type of games before. We see where it was headed. We was well coached on what what they was doing, and and the ties just turned when that announcement came. Um, nobody was celebrating. I just think that the dynamics of the game changed. Um, only the coaches can answer that. Basically, what plays they start calling on offense and defense, and, and and that you know I really don't know. But that's that's when I say the ties were turning when. When they announced that we go into the national championship, we win. Before we let you go, I don't want to end this on a bummer, okay? So I, I heard a story about you the other day. We had a gentleman named Rob Cassidy on who uh, covers recruiting down in the state of Florida. And you you had a son, right, that was a recruit last year? Yeah. 
Okay, so he said he got a chance to talk to you about this. I'm going to play you this audio. He had a he had a story that I loved, man. Loved hearing about you. I want you to hear this and just let us know if this is legit or not. All right. Okay. So you remember Frank Murphy, correct? Oh, oh my God, I, I love Frank Murphy. There's always been this rumor about him that when he committed to K State, after he committed to K State, he took an official visit to Tennessee. And I've confirmed this to be true with him since. I, I couldn't believe it. I thought it sounded like a wise tale. So he's committed to K State, but he still took the official to Knoxville. So they pay to fly into Knoxville. He, <laughs> Frank, is of course from Florida originally. He lands at the airport in Knoxville. And the Tennessee staff is there to get him, but his buddy from Florida is also there to get him. So he takes the free plane ticket, blows off the visit, drives to Florida with his buddy and parties all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Never even sees any coaches from Tennessee or anything. All right, so Frank, we got to know, is, is that story legit? Nah, nah. I took that visit to Tennessee. And, um, I, I mean, because Peyton Manning was just there and just left. I wanted to see what they had. I think they had T. Martin and they had um, Lewis in the backfield. So I really wanted to see what they was about. It just wasn't a good fit for me talking with Coach. Was it former? Yeah, I, it just, just wasn't a good fit for me. And Kansas State definitely and Coach Snyder definitely, um, you know, was a better fit for me. And at the time, I seen that he was a better coacher, a better communicator. And um, so, man, that's who we supposed to have been playing in the national championship. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad you brought that up. You guys would have smoked them, right, in the national championship. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, Tennessee had a solid team, um, a pretty good defense, but I just think they didn't face the offense like us. I don't think they would have been ready for an offense like us. As um, far as their offense, I mean, we see their type of offense all the time, just want to run the ball. It would have played right into our hands because that's all they did was run the ball. Um, you know, we, we, we beat up on people like uh, Ricky Wood. So it would have been hard yeah. to run on us. So we would have forced you to throw, and it just we just had a good team, and you know special teams would have showed up. So it just it would have been a hard game for them, you know. It would have, it really would have. 